All right, let's go ahead and set up our environment. You're gonna head to GitHub forward slash Microsoft forward slash bash dash for dash beginners and click on the fork icon so you can create a copy of this repository on your own GitHub account. Select the owner, which should be your account, any name that you wanna use. You can stick to bash for beginners and make sure the copy, the main branch option is checked. And let's give this a moment to create a fork in our own account. Alrighty, inside your newly created fork from our Bash for Beginners repository, you're going to have all the directories and files inside those directories that we reference throughout the videos. In each video, the link directly to the directory that we'll be talking about will be in the description. So what you can do is click on code and then under code spaces, you're going to click on, there's going to be a button here that says create new code space on main. I've already created one, but in this case, I'm just going to click this button plus a symbol here. And this is gonna create a code space for us. What is a code space if you haven't used one before? It's essentially VS Code in the cloud, in the browser, so you don't have to install anything locally. You can highly customize these for whatever tech stack you're working with. In our case, our setup is gonna be pretty minimal because Bash doesn't really require a lot to be installed, but any kind of customizations that we feel would help this course we've provided in our dev container.json file, which is already there for you. You don't have to do any additional setup. You just have to click that create code space on main button. Uh, just another thing to add about code space is there is a free, tour, free tier with every single GitHub account, but do keep in mind that if you use it for more than what we are showcasing in the course, you might go over that free tier. As long as you stick to the course, you should be completely fine. We're gonna link documentation in the description that will send you to the pricing, to how to set up budgets, and overall just so you can have a better idea of how spending works with GitHub code spaces. But once again, don't worry, if you stick to the course, there's no way you're gonna get over that uh, limit. There's also ways to delete code spaces. So as this is uh, loading up, I'm going to go back to this tab and then drop down here on code. And then you click the three dots on the right and you can just delete. So whenever you're done, make sure to get rid of it in case you don't want to continue using it. Awesome. Let's go back to our code space and you see it tells us that image has been found and it's building con a container with that image. We can click on view logs. If you're the type of person who likes to understand the underlyings of how things like this work, well, this might be interesting to you. But essentially, it's running a bunch of commands for us in building a custom experience with VS Code in the cloud for us. If you haven't used VS Code before, it's a pretty powerful text editor. It's a favorite amongst lots of programmers out there. You can create a bunch of different types of apps, not just things that work with Azure, not just things that work with Bash, but Python, Go, Rust, .NET, and a bunch of other options there. And like I mentioned, with a dev container.json file, you can customize your environment to look like anything you want it to look like, to include anything that you need it to include, which is why we thought it'd be a great environment for us to use for this Bash for Beginners course, because GitHub is something that is available free to everyone. And to a certain extent, so is code spaces. And again, there are going to be limits there, but Everything we are doing in this course will be available in the free tier. Let's give this a few moments to finish setting up for us. Awesome, looks like it's configuring our space now. Perfect, so I actually have my code space settings in my GitHub account to use a dark theme. And we can change that, I'll show you how to change that in a second. So right here in the terminal, you see it already tells us that uh, we have a terminal available for us and we are in the workspace forward slash bash for beginners directory. Depending on how fast your internet is, this might take a few more minutes because we do have some commands that are installing in the background. And that might come up here saying something like post create command running. If that is still on the screen, totally fine. Let it run for, it usually takes anywhere from two to five minutes, nothing more than that. And then you're ready to go once you see this line here. So at your username, forward slash workspaces, forward slash bash for beginners, and then main here, okay? The colors might be different, the symbols might be different, but this line should be relatively same for you. Click on the manage, on the bottom left is a little gear icon. 
And then what you're going to do is click on color theme and you can select any color theme you'd like. And our videos we are using, I believe it is light plus. Oh, hold on. Oh, there we go. The, that command just ran for us. Okay. So like I mentioned, there is a post create command, which is installing uh, some things that we need for our bash course here. So let's give this a few moments. All right. Our command finished. That took about four minutes to finish. So keep that in mind. Now let's go back to changing our theme gear icon on the bottom left, select color theme. And I'm going to go with lights plus visual studio. You can select anything you like. If you like the dark theme, totally fine. Again, it's a personal option there. Now we do have videos covering how to move around in the terminal, but just a quick primer here. You can do LS dash L, which will list all the directories that I'm in that I have available to move into. So for example, in my what are loops, I'm going to say, Hey, I'm working inside of the what are loops directory. So you're going to do CD, which stands for change directory, provide the name of the directory there. And you can type in clear at any point to clear all the output. Then we're going to type LS, which will list the contents here. It looks like we have a couple of files. Then you provide the keyword code and the name of the file that you want to open. Let's do the while loop one. And that'll open up above here and you are ready to work. All right. We've got everything ready for us to dive right into our bash for beginners course.